Okay, I'm going to try and explain some of the physics being used in this game here. First off, the rig. Forget about the rider, just the bike. Um, it's got the main body, which is the parent. The front is connected by a joint which can be used for steering, more visible in first person. And then both the wheels have suspension connecting them. The front's a compressional type, and the second, the back, is a rotary type. And both the wheels also have a, um, that's an axle connecting them. And then the axle is connected with a uh, rotary device, a rotary connector, to allow the wheels to spin. The controls are actually a bit overcomplicated at the moment. But basically, the main controls are accelerate and lean left and right. The uh, balance is detected. It was just using the Z component of the right vector of the bike, but it's now using the cross product of the ground normal, as last touched by the front wheel, and the bike's forward vector, compared to the bike's right vector, which, amongst other things, means that on uneven surfaces, something like this loop. It now works and... Oh, blast. Well, we can try and go around it without crashing. Normally succeed. Um, other than that, holding down space currently breaks the front wheel, allowing us to do nice little drifty motions. Uh, it also increases balance. While well, under 5 miles an hour, there's a speedo in the bottom left. Uh, there's some torque applied to balance the bike, much like the rotational torque for leaning. Um, what else is important? Oh, as for the rider, he's mostly decorative. There's a collision point by the head, uh, which, if you hit hard enough, will cause you to crash. Doesn't have to be very hard either. And I'm using IK to attach the hands to the steering wheel, and the feet to the little crossbar that's now floating there under the bike. This means I can uh, use anything I want, but what I'm using right now is just the inputs directly, to shift around the rider's body, which I think gives a fairly nice effect. I get the transform of the rider upon, a, upon spawning, and constantly lurk back towards that position, so I can uh, uh, apply anything I want and serve him shift back to a sensible position. Um, while I'm thinking what else needs explaining, there's a few new levels. This one's a slightly upgraded level from Wheels 1 in some ways. It's just all a bit more visible now. It's not really a level, it's just a trying out the physics in an interesting situation kind of thing. Um. Other existing levels, like this tricky one, are now much more playable. Uh, recording makes it so much harder. Aside from that, 
that the steering power is also increased when the suspension is compressed. It's hard to see here, but when I lean forwards, the steering wheel does noticeably steer a bit more. And that's dampened over time, over a, a second or so, to make it a bit less intense and jerky. I don't know if this video was in the last video, but I'm going to play it anyway. These balls weigh a few hundred or thousand tons. Not a good thing to climb into on a smaller start bike. couple of other levels I've made just for testing is this Walmart level. This ninja flips level. Actually, just to get a better view of what's going on here. That's the level. Oh, blast! Another rather important bit about the physics I've gotten to mention is the uh, the angular drag. To help stop speed wobble, I've massively increased the angular drag. This has the negative effect of when you're in the air, you uh, stop spinning far too quickly. So to counteract this, uh, the angular drag is 60 while the wheels are touching the ground, and it decreases to 10 while in the air. Uh, also the spin forces to turn the rotation, otherwise alter the bike's rotation, are um, altered to match the angular, angular drag. here are new. Hmm. I'll just see one more lap of that track anyway. Uh, the boost has also been significantly reduced. It's much less powerful, which is very slowly. 
it takes a while to recharge, but still, on some levels, both it and the jump can be a bit overpowered.